I put my offering in early because I'll forget at the end. I told Jeff, I said, when I get up to preach, I have tunnel vision. I just got my mind on one thing, and I don't have much mind this week, Jeff. It was kind of worn out in, in Vegas. You said, what a preacher do going to Vegas? Well, <laughs> I, had, I had to go. I, that's, I'm not lying. That's the truth. Uh, North American Mission Board, uh, 14 western states, and they decided that the hotel rooms were, they could get a bargain there, and so they end up sending us to that place. Well, it just reminded me how much I love Colorado. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how much I really like this place, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is offering time. This is the last day we're taking our Colorado Mission offering, and I got to hear some wonderful reports uh, from around our state this week while I was there with guys from all over the western United States and uh, of how uh, God is blessing in, in different ways, in different ministries, uh, mission projects, uh, all look a little different, but God is really a blessing, and I appreciate your participation in that offering for this past month. And this is the last day. That's good. Offerings come to an end too, right? It's good to have an offering come, come to the end of an offering period, right? So we're praying for everybody this week, and uh, we're glad that you're here this morning. And I always pray in advance, uh, saying, God, I don't know who's going to be in church on Sunday, but uh, uh, you do, and that's what counts. And when you're searching for uh, the right sermon to preach, it's always important uh, that uh, you go first to him and say, Lord, because you do know who will be there and because I don't know who all will be there, it's really important to have a word from you. And so uh, in the uh, headquarters of the Mormon church in uh, Salt Lake City yesterday at the airport, uh, I worked on this sermon, okay, and... Uh, I worked on it at 32,000 feet, and so hopefully this is uh, God's uh, message for all of us this morning. It certainly was a message that I needed to hear, and it's a text I've not preached from for some time. So uh, let's continue to lift up our congregation and continue to lift up our pastor search team as they continue to focus on uh, the uh, new pastor for the church, and, and God is uh, getting that person ready, I know that he is, and God is getting ready the church for that transition. And so we just praise God for what he's doing. Continue to pray, and continue to pray for uh, uh, Kenny. I, I really appreciate our praise team this morning. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, for working hard during the week, getting ready. Uh, I miss Kenny. I, uh, I, I've learned uh, past weeks to lean on him a little bit, you know, and and he and I call each other frequently during the week and talk with one another. And so uh, uh, I miss my brother, but I appreciate others that he's placed uh, in a great congregation that has a lot of folks who can help lead in worship and praise. So God is good. God is good. Uh, even though my Rangers lost, God is good, right? Yeah. <laughs> one strike. Who, whoever said that one strike... He can make a big difference. Made a big difference this week, didn't it? On two occasions, they came within one strike. And I thought, my goodness gracious, how close can you come? Uh, you know, always the, the bridesmaid, but never the bride. You know, I mean, it seems like that's the way it is with, with the teams I choose. So uh, I'm not going to choose a team this week, you know. And so uh, I'm not, I'm not going to let the Lord know who I'm really for. As, <laughs> as, as if he didn't already know. You know, as if he didn't read my mind and already know who he's for. Uh, so, uh, anyway. Turn with me in your copy of God's Word to uh, Jeremiah. This is not the shortest guy in the Bible. That's Nehemiah, but this is Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah lived uh, and ministered uh, 725, 700 years before Christ. Turn with me to the 33rd chapter, Jeremiah 33, 3, a passage that some of you are familiar with. I'm trying to get under the light so I can see. My old eyes aren't what they used to be, believe me. Let's go with the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that wherever we turn in your word, we find you, 
and we find the affirmation of who you are and of uh, exactly what you're doing for your children. And Lord, we are your children. We come to you this morning needing you. We need to hear a word from you. We need to be encouraged by you. We need to be challenged by you. So I ask that you take this verse of Scripture and do that for my heart, for the hearts of all who are here this morning. Lord, we pray for our congregation. We have some who are uh, struggling with situations in life. And Lord, uh, I pray they'll turn to you for the answer. Lord, we have others who are enduring illness, sickness. So I pray that you'd bless them in a very special way. That others, Lord, that uh, have a, a new opportunity for life, uh, a new road to go down. And we pray that you would give them strength and courage and walk with them during this time. Lord, that's who you are as our God. We thank you that we can rely on you and call on you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Jeremiah 33, 3, uh, my copy of God's Word says, uh, this is the Lord speaking to Jeremiah. And he said, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things of which you do not know. When Jeremiah spoke these words, he was actually locked up. He was in a courtyard, a prison yard, but he was locked up. He didn't have his freedom. And so uh, he called out to the Lord, and, and the Lord wanted to assure his prophet because Jeremiah had been faithful for many years in Judah. And uh, the nation Judah actually was under siege at this time. And the uh, wicked enemy Nebuchadnezzar and his troops were about to overflow, uh, overthrow, I should say, not overflow, overflow the walls, but overthrow Jerusalem at this particular time. And uh, the people, uh, they thought that God had forsaken them. They, they didn't know where to turn. They didn't know where to look. And so God tapped Jeremiah on the shoulder. And he, and he said to him, beginning in verse 1, Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah for the second time. And he said, While he was still confined in the court of the guard, that's the courtyard of the, of the prison, saying, Thus says the Lord, who made the earth and who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. He wanted to remind his prophet as if he needed to, and we all need reminding from time to time, do we not? Uh, at various times that God's in charge. You know, he said, I made this place, I made this earth, and, and I'm the creator, and, and I haven't given up uh, my care for this place to this evil king, Nebuchadnezzar, and to the people from the country that he represents. I haven't given up. You're still my people. You're still my man, Jeremiah. And I want to tell you this, that you can call unto me, and I will answer you. And I will reveal to you, I will show you great and awesome things that you can't even dream of. And so that's what we're going to talk about this morning, calling God. The ancient people uh, chanted to him. Our Native Americans, they would chant. That was their way of, of raising up their voice. Uh, the patriarchs, they offered sacrifices to him. They would build off altars and offer sacrifices. David fell on his face before God. Uh, and in the midst of challenge, God told Jeremiah simply to call him, okay? How do you call God? How do you call God? Well, yesterday I used a cell phone to call across different time zones. Uh, yesterday, I, <clears throat> even with my ancient cell phone, I've got one of those that ought to be in a museum somewhere, but uh, I still use it. I, I punched out with my little finger because the buttons are so small. Uh, did a text message across... Uh, the uh, area, uh, got on the airplane, and the pilot spoke to me over the loudspeaker, you know, and in an airport waiting to catch another flight, I, I received a call over a microphone saying, it's time to board. This is time to get on. How does God call us? How do we call God? How do you talk to him? How do you, how do you call him? Uh, I think it's important to know that... Uh, we call God through prayer. He says to us, it's an invitation from God to call Him, to call unto Him. Wow. That blows my mind because the great and awesome creator of the world in which we live, the one who is sovereign, the one who still is in charge, invites us, invites us, gives us an invitation 
to talk with him, to call him in prayer at whatever their circumstance might be. Prayer simply, as I told someone earlier this week, someone said, how do you pray? And I said, 